Hello everyone and welcome back to the HCW YouTube channel. My name is Rate Wrestle and once again we are back with a UK indie show re review and we're back with Kamikaze. So we um, somehow didn't do a review for the last show, I blame Carl. Um, but we're back better than ever and we're joined by Alex Connors. How are you doing? Yes, I'm absolutely fine doing a review to help out a company that insists on screwing me time after time after time. But I'm going to be professional, do my best to do a nice review for all the hardworking talent and not for the management or, as we've already mentioned, General Manager Carl. Yeah. Um, so, as you noticed, um, Alex doesn't have a title at this moment in time. Um, we'll discuss what went on, obviously, nearer the main event style. Um, so, we are discussing today um, Kamikaze Pro Live 36, which was at the Triple X Social Club in Kings Norton on... August 18th, um, and we will kick off with a match that I would be extremely biased if I actually was at the show. Um, so it was Kieran McQueen versus Luke Douglas. Yeah, so. a great match. Great match to watch. Um, you definitely missed out on this one. I would say Kieran McQueen's greatest performance at Kamikaze for a long time because he had a lot of fire. The crowd were really behind him. Kieran McQueen sometimes... He does lack a bit of confidence and the crowd do struggle to connect, but not this time. He was really on fire. He was obviously met with the hard-hitting force um, and I would say Luke outstruck him and wore him down with some big strikes. You've seen a ro roaring elbow and some super kicks that absolutely rocked him. But a surprise result here and some good technical skills from Kieran McQueen and a Connor roll for the victory and he was thrilled and he should be. A Huge win for Kieran McQueen, in my opinion. A very excited to see where it takes him. Luke Douglas was left, sat in the ring, looking quite despondent after the match. And it took him a long time to get to the back. And I think he's going to have to rethink his game plan for the future. It looked like that really affected him. Yeah, and um, from what I've been told, it wasn't like the Maximus Akuru win where he was just, he was cocky and then he got caught. This actually just legit, Kieran outdid him. Yeah, um... It was sort of a ripcord from Luke. He spun him out. He swung for a bigger strike after he'd hit a bunch already. Uh, but Kieran was just more aware. He was on the ball. He ducked behind, ran him into the ropes. O'Connor with the bridge. It was a lovely pin, if I'm honest, from Kieran McQueen. It looked really uh, crisp and clean and out of nowhere. But yeah, it wasn't Luke being cocky. This was a loss that I think will really affect him a lot more because he can't just blame himself. And while he was dominant on the striking front, the technical wrestling from Kieran McQueen came out and shone through, and Luke just lost, which I think is a huge surprise to us. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this is a big win for Kieran because Kieran he's been around Kamikaze Pro for a long time, but I feel like this is his biggest win. Um, and hopefully, it does push him. Thrilled after this match, he dove into the crowd. He was cheering, he was shouting, he was up on his feet. You could tell that it meant so much to him, like he just won a World Cup. And um, for Kieran, I'm very excited for him. Uh, very interested to see what happens to him at the next show. Can he keep the momentum going? Well, you hope he will do, because um, there's a few people at Kamikaze where they do get a momentous win and then suddenly don't kick on. So uh, this will be the proving of Kieran. Obviously, no matches are announced for uh, Kamikaze Pro Live 37 as of yet. Um, but tickets are on sale, I think, like two hours from this recording. Um, so this will be out on Tuesday, tomorrow to us. Um, so we will carry on with that. We'll be able to identify one of the matches from the result of the Rumble at the end, so um, at least we'll be able to get people excited about that. Yeah. Um, so I, as I said, I wasn't there due to being at work, um, so there's a match which doesn't look like the match that was announced, so we had Samuel Hughes. Um, I believe he was against Nate, supposedly, originally. He was supposed to go against Nate, was it? Nate Riley, for those who don't know, is currently... In a sling, um, shoulder dislocated at the dojo while practicing some really a rather insane high risk offense. Um, full responsibility Nate took on himself. It was a bit of a uh, pressure move, but he was trying to get himself in shape for this big match and he took it a step too far. Hopefully, he'll be back with us really soon. Um, I believe he's set to be back at the end of September uh, for a match against me, so I'm sure he'll be uh, not wanting to miss that. Uh, but that does mean that Samuel Hughes sauntered out in front of the crowd, demanded to be named the victor, and demanded to be 
put last in the Kamikaze uh, Rumble and really wanted to just pick up that win and uh, not deal with any singles action beforehand. And that would be a huge advantage for Sam if you get away with not doing your match and get into that Rumble. Most people in that Rumble will have already wrestled. You'll be having a great start. Unfortunately for Sam, he started to experience some technical difficulties. First of all, they dropped the mic. Then the sound system started blaring. And then some really quite hideous noises came through the sound system that were not intelligibly English. And then, out of nowhere, came a debut to Kamikaze, um, announcing himself in the language that none of us could understand, purely as the ring gremlin who lives under the ring. Uh, it was point. a shocking <laughs> yeah clearly salvaged gear from what wrestlers had left behind he had one kick pad uh, one elbow pad uh, half of a uh, tights and obviously whatever junk had been thrown away he'd managed to yeah. scrabble and piece together uh, he only spoke in this almost delirious esque language and he really threw Sam off by clearly wanting his very first match uh, Sam didn't want to give it to him but Carl, who obviously never plays fairly or by anybody's rules or with any sensible logic whatsoever, uh, decided to make a match then and there without Sam even agreeing to it. And away we go. Samuel Hughes versus the Ring Gremlin was match number two. Yep, and I've seen the image of the Ring Gremlin. Um, you've described him perfectly. And just a riffraff of stuff going on in that, you know, that image. <laughs> Foot, boot on the other foot, he's got a hat, he's got a t-shirt at the start, half of a pair of dungarees. Uh, yeah, obviously, you make do with what you find under the ring. Yeah. Uh, so, onto the match itself. Sam Hughes was obviously not prepared for the ring gremlin, uh, but he was thrown off even more with the ring gremlin's style in the opening few minutes. Um, he could wrestle, but also he could uh, hump your leg out of nowhere. Uh, he can make a lot of strange noises and uh, really try and make a fool out of Sam. Um, although I don't think he intended to. I think that's just the way the ring gremlin has fun. Uh, but Sam put him down with a rainmaker mm. and really started to go to town. He obviously was annoyed at being in this situation. And this was a bit more similar to the ending of Luke Douglas's previous match, uh, not the one that just happened, where Sam... Once he'd finally got a hold of the ring gremlin, he had a size advantage. He, again, had a striking advantage. He was maybe a bit too cocky. He was maybe a bit too slow going for his finisher. And out of nowhere, the ring gremlin with a schoolboy, one, two, three, debut and a victory for the ring gremlin. Yeah, he might have took that from the previous match as well. Of, um, if he's been hiding around in the ring, you know, he's probably generally heard Good. the saw it and then um, he's decided to pick it up for himself. Um, yeah, who knows? To be honest, if you've been living under the ring the whole time, you've heard every match in Kamikaze history. You've got a lot of experience. Yeah, um, and that's not a good time for Sam, I'll be honest. Um, Sam was on a bit of a roll originally when he decided to turn his back against the fans, but he's kind of in a lackluster pitch position at the moment. He can't pick up wins. Yeah, I think Sam has gotten better every time I've seen him recently. And I've said that to a lot of people um, when I first joined Kamikaze and Sam was still a do-gooder. He was completely lost in a shuffle. And these days, Sam really does stand out as a competitor with an edge. But yet, he has not been able to turn that into success for the past few Kamikaze shows. I don't know what the formula is for him because this seemed like a match he should have won. And maybe it was just overconfidence. Um, but what else can he do if he's already resorted to changing his ways and changing his tactics? He's not above cheating anymore, and yet he still can't get wins, uh, not only against real and fierce and experienced competitors like Chantel, but now against debuting kind of wacky competitors. They're still getting their best of it. So, yeah, he really needs to rethink his game plan. Yeah, um, and good luck to the ring gambling. Um a lot of people, not many Kamikaze Pro debuts normally pick up wins, except for, I'd say, Maximus was the last one you can think of. The rest kind of go out yeah. losing, so uh, hopefully the ring gremlin can... Oh, he might never turn up again, but <laughs> hopefully if he does, um, he picks up a win. This was not an announced match, and it didn't seem like there was any plan behind it, so who knows when we'll see him again. It could be at the next show, he could have impressed and earned himself another match. Or it could be months and months from now before we see him again. But you're right, it is very rare to step into Kamikaze and win. No matter how much you train, there's nothing like being in the ring in a real match on the day. And Kamikaze is one of the toughest promotions 
in the world, let alone this country. So it doesn't surprise me that most people don't win on their debut. But the Ring Gremlin did it. So let's see if we'll see him again. Yeah, um, and then we will move on um, to Maximus Sakoru who faced uh, Hassan. Yeah, this was a match where the crowd was dead split. Um, last match, actually, the Ring Gremlin was incredibly popular for someone who'd just shown up. Uh, but this time, the crowd were dead split. Hassan, he's the experienced one. He's got a lot of love from the crowd already, but I think a lot of people are excited by Maximus. Um, like you said, he's come in and he's undefeated. He's on an absolute hot streak, which is very rare for this level of competition. And he's a powerhouse. He's exciting. He can moonsault. He's got the whole complete game. And he's got a look that people can really get behind. Uh, debuted something of a new move, which I really enjoyed. Um, I know we all enjoy Are You Not Sports Entertained from Maximus Sakaro. Uh, but this time, he would managed to get Hassan on the apron. Hassan was holding on for dear life. Maximus Sakara was trying to knock him down. And personally, what seemed a little bit to me to resemble the film 300, Maximus Sakara oh. told him that this is Kamikaze and booted him clean off the apron into oblivion. Uh, fantastic. Hassan, he took some risks in this match as well. He did a dive from the ring straight over the top rope. He almost caught his leg, but thankfully all that momentum hit Max square in the chest and Hassan was absolutely fine. Uh, this was a real back and forth. Hassan had power at the start, but the experience from Maximus Okoro grew even in just those 15, 20 minutes. And by the end, he was countering those moves that Hassan had hit earlier on, uh, which was really great to see and shows why he's such a good student. And finally, he hit a sh uh, slice bread um, from Maximus Okoro, followed by his version of the angle slam. I think we've seen this combination before. Uh, great result. One, two, three clean win in the middle of the ring over someone who had been on a roll and had been a number one contender not too long ago. So that's fantastic for Maximus. Yeah. Uh, is that, has Maximus lost? Yeah, because I know he was on a winning streak. So did he win the last previous show as well? Yeah, he's won every single match, uh, including the six man at the 10th anniversary on the main show. So even multi-man matches, Maximus currently never pinned, never submitted and simply never lost, even in a multi-man. Yeah, um, so I don't like he, he. They've got to push him towards the title picture at some point, um, but he might have to win a roulette rumble, which we'll get to that point. Um, and then obviously Hassan, Hassan's in the tricky situation now that he he's lost a title match, um, and he's kind of like he's like sauntering. Not sauntering is probably not the best word, but he's kind of like he doesn't know where he's going. I feel like, um, yeah. Two losses back to back for Hassan. Obviously, Maximus Okoro, and then he, it was me on the last show. So, after going rocketing up to that title match, which for some people may have come out of nowhere, but Hassan grabbed it with both hands and really uh, looked like he was on a real hot streak. Now, two losses back to back. And it does bring up, I think, an interesting point here. We had some division um, between Kamikaze 1.0 and Kamikaze 2.0. Not something. I like to get involved in, but there just seemed to be heated rivalry. And this show seemed to be a real hot streak for Kamikaze 2.0. Uh, I think they pretty much won every match they were in. And Kamikaze 1.0, maybe they need to get together and get on the same page. Because someone like Hassan and someone like Sam, Samuel Hughes, they are in a very similar boat from my perspective right here. And maybe there needs to be some alliances. Obviously, they're not on the same page when it comes to the Kamikaze audience. But Kamikaze 2.0, they help each other out. They're there for each other. They've got each other's back. They're training. They're prepping for opponents. And it seems to have swung the scales in the favour of Kamikaze 2.0. Yeah, and it seems like, yeah, they're really in favour. I said we'll get through the results today. But it's been the majority for the last few months. Uh, can we, the, a lot of the people like... I said Kieran, except he's picked up the big win. Uh, Hassan, um, Samuel, they're kind of it. They're not m momentum guys a lot of the time, um, so they are struggling. Um, so hopefully Hassan can pick it up, and then um, with Maximus, um, don't know where he's gonna when he's gonna lose. Excited to see who'll be the first person to give him that pinfall. Probably Alex Garners. <laughs> well, I've yet to have the chance, so I look forward to it. <laughs> Um, and then a big match um, and a big result. Um, we had Chantal Jordan um, versus Edgar Adams. So this normal kind of match, you obviously expect Chantal Jordan to come out on top. But judging by what I can see here, it 
didn't look as clean cut. Yeah, this is a really interesting match. Some controversy here at the end as well. Um, it looked at some point like the referee maybe was a bit late on one of the covers. That could have messed with Chantel's head because, um, yeah, she really looked frustrated after this match. Um, the match itself went probably as much as you'd expect. Edgar Adams, he had the speed. Uh, he's a very exciting competitor. He's super athletic and super fun to watch. But... Once you get met with Chantal Jordan's kicks, you're in real trouble. Um, that was kind of what we expected. And I think everyone expected Chantel to seal the deal on this one. Um, but when going for her finisher, um, the jig and tonic, as I like to call it, this reverse mm. pile driver, Ed Gradams managed to escape. And a few moments later, rolled her up and managed to score a real surprise upset. Um, yeah, this is interesting. It means a lot of the matches in the first half ended with real technical pinfalls. And it, once again... I've got to say, is that Kamikaze Dojo 2.0 working together and practicing these things? Because it paid off for all of them uh, in the first half. The only uh, match that didn't was Maximus Socorro. Um, so, yeah, really good stuff um, and a huge win for Edgar Adams. A massive win. I think probably the biggest win of his career and probably the biggest upset on the show. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you said, yeah, we're going to bring that up. It seems like Maximus only got, was the only person who kind of got a clinical win. The rest were all very much like roller, not flash pins. Well, yeah. you'd say, yeah, flash pins um, to pick up the win. So they all kind of followed in each other's steps. Um, so I don't know if Edgar watched the Ring Gremlins match, who then Ring Gremlin watched uh, Kieran's match, but it just seems like everyone was learning. Yeah, um, I'm not sure which the Ring Gremlin and the rest of 2.0 can <laughs> communicate with each other, but they, yeah, they definitely are learning from each other. They're definitely working together and it's working for them. Yeah, definitely, and that's a massive loss for Chantal Jordan, which you wouldn't expect. Um, Any time when I say yeah. Chantal Jordan match, she's just instantly, yeah, there's whoever she's against, I'd probably go Chantal Jordan. Um, yeah. Is she going to take and it obviously, Yeah. She's recently lost that relentless title. She did win on the last show as part of a tag match with mm -hmm. Brandon Jordan. Um, but, yeah, you'd expect her to win this one. You'd think this one was in the bag, pretty much, for Chantel. Not really a, a game-changing result for her or a match for her. The fact that, that she didn't come away with it is really interesting. Um, I'm not sure whether she's yet at the point of Luke Douglas, who's had quite a few big losses, and you can really see that affecting him. It took him a long time to leave the ring. Chantel, I think she'll be focused again. As long as she can shake this one off and get a big win at the next show, I don't think there's any crisis of confidence. Just a flash in the pan, and that happens to the best of us. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, though, because if she does rack up another loss at the next show, and then that might start to be a downward trend. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we move into the second half, um, which was Darice facing Ronnie G, who Ronnie G's just been facing a who's who of kamikaze at the moment, straight in the deep yeah. end. Ronnie G is secretly the best wrestler at kamikaze. Um, he will be... Absolutely one of the best uh, from 2.0. He blows me away every time I see him. Uh, once again, though, the crowds, they're so behind Ronnie G that the opening five minutes of this match was just the crowd and Ronnie G and Darice connecting. There was a lot of dabs. Uh, they guilt tripped the ref into a few dabs. Um, Ronnie G was using those dabs to fire up with chops, with some chop dabs in the corner. Bang, bang, bang. Um, yeah, <laughs> A load of fun, a fantastic opening. Uh, Ronnie G was obviously, I think, underestimated by Doris. Doris did not give Ronnie G a lot of respect. Um, and for where Doris is at, you wouldn't expect him to have any trouble. But as we just learned from the last match, you know, if you underestimate your opponent, bad things can happen. Uh, but finally, at the end, Doris strung that power game together. He overpowered Ronnie G, some big tackles and strikes, and finally set out power bomb. And uh, that was the end of it for Ronnie G, but an impressive showing, a really hot opening, and he, I hope, gained the respect of Doris that really wasn't there when the match began. Yeah, um, and from what we've been saying, Doris is the only one out of the eyes of the 1.0 that kind of proved the win. He, Doris, Doris kind of started the fire of the 1.0, 2.0 matches after he had yeah, that maybe, match with Edgar. Yeah, that's, that was definitely the spark that started the war, but maybe Doris needs to be a team player for once in his life, get the rest of the people together, get 1.0 back on the same page, um, because 2.0, they're dominating this war, in my opinion, from an outsider's perspective. Yeah, because leading from example is one thing, but, you know, you have to, you can't just expect everyone else to suddenly, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but uh, Therese, as usually, 
that's always the Kamikaze Pro Champion. Um, Ronnie G facing the Who's Over Kamikaze, yourself, um, George, and now Darice. Um, he's not picked up a win yet, but three tough guys, fair enough. Um, uh, no, you expected him to, and honestly, it's no, no slight on him that he hasn't because he's put in great performances each and every time. Uh, he's only going to get better and better, and his potential is through the roof. If you've seen him in training, which obviously most people watching this won't have, but Take it from me, he has got so much potential and we're already impressed by Edgar Adams, by Nate Riley, by Maximus Sakaro. Ronnie G might be the best who come out of 2.0. So I look forward to seeing what's going to happen next. Excellent. And then we move on to a, I would say a big win, um, which was uh, Will Stevens versus JEC. Yeah, uh, this, I would say, is a real summation of the war we've been talking about. This seems like two frontline troops, two guys who are really battling for wins and losses, who aren't going massively on a streak in either direction right now. Uh, this was the war boiled down to one match. Uh, classic 1.0 Will Stevens, classic 2.0 JC, and 2.0 came out on top. This was much more back and forth. Um, this was a competitive match. It wasn't particularly dominated in either way you expected will to have the power game and to really apply pressure to jc which he did i did not see the last few minutes because my match was on next as we we're about to discuss so um i believe jc hits finisher and got the win um rather than a, another classic roll-up um so yeah a good win for jc um he's had a few good wins it's not been as successful as maximus but i think for me this is the summation of 1.0 versus 2.0. These are two guys who are solidly in those camps who are basically going to do as good as those camps are doing overall, who are going to be on their level. And 2.0 just had the momentum. And JC's got pumped. He's got excited. He's ready. Whereas uh, Will Stevens, he's probably dealing with not that many friends who are really on a hot streak who are really helping him out with new advice and so he's probably gone into this alone whereas JC has probably gone into it with all the rest of the camp backing him and that's probably what's made the difference yeah and that is a big win for JC um, Will Stevens is one that's been struggling recently um, except for these tag team matches um, he's been struggling in the singles division so hopefully he can get back on board and he's had Hastor out with him here and still didn't pick up the win so yeah, you've got to worry about what's the future of that tag team. Um, they had one big win at the start, um, but now, you know, they lost to the Jordans and they kind of had a numbers advantage here on JC and still lost. So that's got to be very frustrating. You'd also think that Will Stevens, he's really the guy who's the example for his tag team. He's the more experienced one. So if he's not getting the job done, what's Hastor going to be thinking? Um, yeah, a really interesting to see how they go as a team. Uh, again, I do think, even though they are a pair, they probably need more support. Samuel Hughes, Hassan, they're in the same boat, so maybe they should try and band together. Um, but yeah, that tag team, I think they're going to need to uh, refresh their vibe somehow because at the moment they are really struggling to pick up some wins. No. Um, and then, unfortunately, um, we're now going to have to discuss a match um, which... There were some shenanigans, we would say. Um, so it was yourself, uh, Malice Connors, um, versus the reigning Kamikaze Pro Live champion, George Lydon. Yeah. Um, and I pinned George. I won. My music played. I held up the belt. I went to leave. And general manager, Carl, restarted the match. Yeah, now, why was that? I don't know how many matches you've seen from Kamikaze in your history, but yeah. I imagine it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I imagine if the ref has gone down and there's been back and forth, kerfuffle, back and forth, people trying to do whatever it takes to win the match. If I'm not mistaken, the ref went down in Luke Douglas versus Doris, yep. and there was low blows and belts flying all over the place. I don't remember a time where that has caused a match to be restarted before. No. Do you remember? No. So while I'm not the one who knocked down the ref, and I'm not the one who caused that ref to have a big golf ball-sized lump on his head, all I did was do exactly what every single person at Kamikaze has done, George, 
Jarese and Luke included just from these past two shows and tried to do whatever it takes, mm-hmm. whatever you have to, especially if the ref is not there to pick up the win. I am the only one who apparently has been punished for it and has a match restarted when that match was done. One, two, three was counted. Bell was rung. Music was playing. And I think that's victimization of the highest order. I think it's quite honestly disgusting from Kamikaze and specifically from our general manager. Um, the fact that it's so obviously targeted, the fact that I had to convince George through, let's say, aggressive means to accept a title match because our beloved general manager wouldn't give me one mm-hmm. despite my record just shows even further that it's victimization. As you can see, I've clearly a little bit paler, a little bit more tired looking since then. It's been a tough few days to get over the fact that I don't have that belt on me and I should and deserve to. Um, and I don't really know what my future is going to be in Kamikaze now because what's going to happen to me next time? I win a match at the next show and they're, are they just going to restart if I win? Is the rule simply if I win, the match doesn't count? Yeah. Um, so from what you're saying, like, we, d- there is clearly a bias because we've openly talked about, um, for example, Sam Hughes coming on the show. He openly talked about kicking people in the dick um, in front of the referee <laughs> sometimes and matches have never been still restarted. Uh, the amount of cheating and so forth that's happened in Kamikaze matches haven't restarted and then it just seems they've suddenly decided the one time let's in a big title match let's make a precedent and screw you yeah and where's the gratitude from Kamikaze all day I've heard big fight feel this is George's toughest test this is the match that Kamikaze's been building to this is the one that's got all the buzz and all the excitement And everyone who's in the locker room is crowded around that curtain. Everyone's watching and learning from this match. You'd think Kamikaze would be excited to have this big match, to have this huge rivalry right there at Kamikaze Pro. Not another shake hands and George fights one of his own friends because Kamikaze are too scared and all they ever put (laughs) are too slow. Yes. So I thought they'd be a bit more grateful, a bit more excited to have that heat and drama. But instead... Yeah, like you say, it's never happened to anybody else. We've seen it a thousand times. Mine's the only one that gets restarted. So, uh, obvious bias. And I don't really know how I'm supposed to proceed. Yeah, All you can only think is that they know they can control George. And I feel like they, yeah. with someone like yourself, they don't want as champion. Because um, you're not going to be like a, controlled by Carl Robinson, yeah. I'm going to be honest. And it shows by the opponents that Carl Robinson finds for George. How often is it that George is facing a 2.0 trainee who's another do-gooder with a happy face who will do whatever Carl says, or he's facing Chantel, another person who's been around Kamikaze forever, who's in Carl's back pocket. How often? I mean, I can't think of anyone this year that George has faced who wasn't a Kamikaze chosen favourite. And the first time it happens, they restart the match. Yeah, absolutely outrageous. And I can't um, agree with you more. Um, just no... Carl Robinson, he ruined my YouTube channel, and now he's ruining wrestling. Yeah, absolutely ruined the show. Um, And I think they were probably scared not only of having a champion that wasn't a kamikaze, born and bred person that they could control, but also what the dynamic would be to the crowd, because I'm sure many of the crowd were happy to see me lose, but for the first moment, you first felt like maybe... Kamikaze management are just giving George an easy time. And I think we all remember multiple times in wrestling, whether it's John Cena or Roman Reigns, times when the crowd have finally cottoned on to, hold on a minute, is this a worthy champion or is this management's chosen champion? And which we'll have to carry on, we'll wait and see. Obviously, we know his next opponent, which we'll get into now. Um, Yeah, uh, do the match really quickly. There was a... A brawl at the start, brawling on the up onto the stage. George was DDT'd on the stage. Incredibly tough. He managed to get back into the ring, which was really, uh, you know, I'm not going to discredit George, mm. the, the athlete, just the way kamikaze management protect him in their bubble wrap. But yeah, he made it back into the ring after that. Uh, then George took Shining Wizard to the back of the head, the crown of thorns, Brain Buster on the knee, in the first 30 seconds after the bell went, no one's kicked out of that so far. George did. George tried to get a bit of fire. He got powerbombed off the top. Again, he was really 
really tough in this match. He really took a big beating. Uh, George fired back with some big boots and some German suplexes, and you managed to see that I was just also tough, fired straight back up. We brought to the outside, back in we went. George hit this Masawa-like elbow off the top, and then he went for a 450. Mm -hmm. I again fought through, tried to stop him. And when I was knocked off the top rope from the 450, struggling to get up, I did use the ref to help me up. That's not illegal, but George came with the power elbow. I ducked. Ref took it. At this point, absolute chaos ensued. George may have got clocked with a belt. I'm sure he was swinging for me as well. Second ref came out, crown of thorns, brain buster. One, two, three, bell goes, music plays. A Big minute, win. two minutes yeah. past, I am the Kamikaze Pro Live champion. Carl saunters over, grabs a mic, restarts the match. George blasts me from behind like a coward, 450, and that is apparently the official result. <laughs> It's, a, it's not it's not great um it's not a good looking kamikaze either um but yeah we will move on to um the uh, Rue roulette rumble um so this had a few debuts in um which you'll have to talk me through and a returning ryan parrot uh, which was nice to see yeah so i will admit i didn't watch this rumble i was not only battered but also furious i stormed straight out of the building after my match i was on my way back home, what else could I do? Obviously furious. But I do know that we did have some debuts. Sonny Noss, a really great competitor, trains in a few schools, but he's always there at Kamikaze. He's got such good fire. Uh, really uh, excited to see him. And I've been excited to wrestle him for a while myself. He's got really good technical skills, which is different from a lot of the 2.0 guys who are high-flying. Yeah. And we also saw Coach Mahan. He's also a different prospect because he's, uh, far more of an interesting character and a persona. He's a sports coach and he brings that into the ring. We did see the return of Ryan Parrott, a man we all know and love who's been around a kamikaze for many years, and the return of somebody who I have never seen wrestle because oh, this was... Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention this, yeah. The lad, Sean Devine, is back at kamikaze. Ball stream 1.0. Yeah, 1.0 need him. So I was really excited that he's back. I've seen him at training. I've spoken to him a good few times. And uh, yeah, he seems like a great person to have back on the show. But he left before I'd even joined. So I've never seen a, a uh, Sean Devine match. I'm looking forward to watching one soon. Yeah. Um, Sean, um, so I spoke to him quite a lot recently. And he was like, I'm just going to go back to training just, you know, to help out. And now he's got the itch. And now he's back. <laughs> um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Because Sean character, well, he's like, he fan favourite um, when he was there um, and he had a heat of rather with Luke Douglas so uh, that's 1.0 yeah. but also it's probably not good for Luke that he's back No that's exciting so yeah the rest of the entrance was pretty much just everyone who's been on the show so far minus myself and George and uh, final two Ed Adams and MJ Grayson uh, MJ Grayson again actually only in this rumble not a match earlier in the night so he was fresher uh, and it looked like he'd really made a dominant performance. He'd gone through most of the rumble, uh, but he had been worn down over the course. And eventually, Edgar Adams managed to just boot him off the apron and pick up the win. And uh, he will apparently get to face George. Uh, and maybe if he pins George, they can just re restart the match until George wins. Yep, in the uh, the All Friends uh, main event of Kamikaze Pro 37. Yeah, George came out, gave him a hug, gave him a shake of the hands. Well done, mate. Thanks, buddy. May the best man win, apparently. I feel like if Edgar clocks him with a bout and then pins him, I don't think they will start him because Edgar's the kind of guy that back pocket. Yeah, no, I don't think they will. I think they'd let that carry on through. Um. So, yeah, that was the end of um, Kamikaze Pro 86. Um, a very sombre, not great end. Um, well, for good for Edgar. Um. So, Kamikaze Pro 37 is going to be live from the Kamikaze Pro Dojo. For anyone that saw the 10th anniversary show, that's where it um, resonated from. Um, I believe it is September 15th, and that's going off the top of yeah. my head. So, yeah, um, and tickets are now on sale as of this video, because um, we're filming yeah. the day before. No George versus Edgar, but nothing else yet announced, obviously, because we have got this review done relatively quickly for us. For once. <laughs> 
Um, but yep, yeah, so as usual, like and subscribe. Um, it's been helping us out. The channel's doing pretty well at this moment in time, so let's keep that train going. Um, every like that we get, Alex might be slightly happier. I don't know. Um, but um, that's it, pretty much. Um, so from goodbye from myself and Alex.